Here's a quick tour of the flight simulator I've been building. It's uh, obviously just being roughed in right now, but making some pretty decent progress. Um, it's been a work in progress over the last several years, uh, including a couple moves, so it's been adapted to different space. This one is now in my basement. You can see I've got the basic framework roughed in. I've gotten um, three 60-inch TVs to be used as the uh, monitors. I decided to go with uh, TVs as opposed to computer monitors because, number one, they're bigger, and um, as opposed to a projection screen because I think the clarity is a little bit better in all lighting conditions. Uh, today I've been working on basically completing the, the framing. As you can see it's uh, basically just a, a wall with some 2x4s and then I've spanned it with uh, some 2x3s and I'm using uh, metal braces such as these to make my connections. It's a little bit easier to make that happen. And you can see over here the uh, two by four braces have these wrap around type brackets uh, to make them nice and secure. The um, interior will have a slope similar to that right there and I've just been kind of roughing it in for uh, an eyeball view of uh, head clearance and overhead panel. Uh, they're just clamped in place right now and then I've kind of roughed in the, uh, the drop on the front there because as you can see here, there will be a slope uh, on the interior, simulating the front of a, an airplane. Uh, last couple days I've been working on the uh, panel itself, so it's essentially roughed in. It took a little bit of fine-tuning to make it work. Uh, I've got two touchscreen panels. Right now it's set up for a uh, Cessna stationaire panel, which you can see flying out there. On the right is another touchscreen. Um, eventually these two touchscreens will be set up to run on the same computer. The um, instruments over here are from Air Manager. It's a free program. They are running pr presently on this monitor only and they're on a separate computer that is communicating with the uh, flight simulator computer. This monitor right here is still being run by the flight sim computer and uh, that's how I've dragged down the uh, GPS and the uh, ATC box. This is a um, center console that I just kind of whipped together. Uh, it's, it's generic right now. It's just got the uh, prop mixture and fuel control on it. It's got some GoFlight instruments that I kind of put in there. Uh, up on the uh, main instrument panel I've got my uh, landing gear and uh, trim panel a um, VHF uh, communication panel and a buff one. The black one is one that's actually not working, this one right here. Damaged in uh, one of my recent moves, it's no longer functioning, but I put it in there for a spacer. Ironically, this one down here does work, so I may just swap those out. Eventually I'm going to get another one of those new panels from GoFlight, so that I'll have uh, all matching panels up there in the uh, center. Now eventually, up in this area here, I plan on putting a, uh, another smaller touchscreen, um, hopefully a USB, perhaps a tablet, and that will um, allow me to drag the GPS down to the touchscreen over in this area here. So from the back of the cockpit, which is exactly four feet square from the panel to the edge. Uh, you can actually stand up. I believe this is about seven feet tall and it slopes down toward the front. Don't know the exact uh, height of that yet. It's like I said just being roughed in right now. But it will allow me to get into the chair comfortably without banging my head on the uh, uh, cabin top. And you can see it gives you a fairly immersive effect when you're sitting here in the uh, uh, chair. I've got the panel in front of me and then out front. You don't really see too much of the frame of the outside computer. Now the outside uh, monitors are not hooked up yet. I'm still building my uh, final flight sim computer. That will be completed sometime in the near future. But once they are completed, I will have 
this area right here blocked in to simulate a window so you won't see the uh, bench work supporting the monitors you won't be able to see the ceiling either they will all be covered up as will this side over here you won't see the bench work there'll be a simulated window there so again it's a work in progress again these are just uh, clamped in place roughing them in to make sure I've got the measurements and the and the perspectives right one thing that you'll notice when you're looking forward you don't really see the seam of the left monitor and the center monitor because there'll be an upright basically in the way uh, that's going to be moved over a little bit but as you pan over to the right because of parallax error obviously that gap between the uh, center monitor and the right monitor is, is pretty significant but there's just no way around that without severely distorting the uh, shape of the panel so that's just not going to happen so that's a brief tour of what I've got going on over here on my left you can see I'm still using a uh, a uh, keypad to communicate with flight sim which eventually will go away I've actually put in some um, uh, switches that I picked up online they are wi wired to a uh, 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 keyboard simulator or a keypad simulator so these are all functional uh, if you pick it up you can see all the wiring and spaghetti behind it it's a, a Leo Bodnar uh, emulator down below. Uh, eventually this will be replaced rather than using the MFD board uh, or MDF I guess it is. Uh, I'm going to put um, some acrylic plastic. I'm going to paint it um, and mask off some letters that will be backlit so that the uh, lettering and identification for those switches will be uh, uh, backlit. And then where the keyboard is I'll have a cup holder and some other stuff. And then in this portion of the panel right here uh, I will actually put in some true electrical uh, switches so they'll control overhead lighting uh, and cockpit lighting uh, with regular uh, 110 volt lights. So again, it's a, it's a work in progress. It's definitely functional right now. You can see that I'm flying. I'm actually uh, using an uh, air hauler, so I'm flying one of my missions there. Uh, looking at the uh, GPS closely, you can see we're going up to my home base. We're just now crossing from Ohio into uh, Michigan and uh, we should be landing here before too long. But anyways, that's a uh, brief tour of uh, my home cockpit. It will be dual controlled eventually. I'll put another uh, uh, yoke over to the right underneath that monitor. I've already got two um, uh, rudder pedals set up. So uh, again, this will all be tidied up so you won't see all that wiring and all the the clutter below there those will all be uh, tidied up and out of sight but uh, anyways work in progress it's uh, coming along thought I'd give you guys a preview of what I've been working on as well as playing other games and working and doing all the things that you have to do to to pay for all this stuff I've also got another chair that I have to assemble just like that one so there'll be two chairs in here two controls side-by-side -side seating should be comfortable for two people and uh, anyways we'll talk to you guys soon Hope you're all doing well. Take care. Okay, you're still a little bit high, so let it come down. Now it looks about right. So about 400 feet per minute. Coming down a little bit fast. Use the trim button, remember. So now it looks pretty good. You're on the glide slope. You're a little bit to the right of the runway. We got the flaps down. You're on speed. You're on glide slope. Looking good. And you just fly it down to the runway. Keep an eye on your airspeed. Don't let it go too fast or too slow. 
and watch your rate of descent so it doesn't go down too fast. Looking good. Nope. You could, but it's not necessary. Getting a little bit high. So let it go down a little bit. Ready to pull the power. Look at the far end of the runway. Toronto's approach, 7411, with you. 7411, let it come down. Nice.
Doing the tour of my uh, simulator basement. I showed you the flight simulator uh, a little while ago. Here's another simulator I built for my grandson. It is a driving simulator. Um, he didn't have the space for it, wasn't using it, so I took it back. And it's basically uh, for racing games, uh, truck simulator, bus simulators, anything that requires a steering wheel. So it's uh, kind of in rough shape right now. I need to put it back together. Eventually I'm going to have triple head to go with three monitors up here on the top. Cut the driving wheel and the uh, brake and accelerator down the bottom. The seat was simply uh, pulled out of a junkyard. I think it was out of a uh, Kia, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's kind of, like I said, in disrepair right now. There are some switches that I had on the fascia of the panel so you could, you know, turn the lights on and uh, do other things, interface with the um, simulator while you're driving without having to use a keyboard. And over si on the side just basically uh, an area that I had like a center console in the car. Um, thought about at one point putting a comp the computer in there just to hide it, but uh, the computer that will eventually be driving this simulator is too big to fit in there, but you could you could you know close it in, put some storage in there. So, anyway, that's another simulator that I've built. Uh, the seat's completely adjustable. Um, again, the uh, switches and controls have to be modified. Eventually, that's the computer that's going to be driving the uh, driving simulator. This is an Alien Fifty One. Uh, monster. It's a fairly old system now. I think it's about four or five years old. Uh, that will be doing all the driving simulators and the one that I'm building for the flight simulator will take its place. Uh, right now there's um, a lot of loose wires and not very sophisticated looking but again that's uh, something that will be put back together once I get my flight simulator built. So this is uh, the sim room basically. I've got my workbench over here where I've got an old computer I put together that I'm trying to repair, a boat that I'm building, small workbench down here in the basement, driving simulator here, flight simulator over there, basically a really cluttered desk area that I built for uh, building models and office stuff, model stuff on the wall. This would be another workbench uh, where I'll uh, Put together some of the kits and models that I'm working. I've got a uh, basically a, a band saw right there, a belt sander. So that's a tour of the simulator room, flight simulator, and driving simulator. Can't wait to get them all back up and operating. We'll talk to you all later. Have a good one.